Hello, my name's Rasheen and I'm sick of reading. So it's the end of the month and time again for another library haul. Um, this is the biggest library haul I have done thus far. It may only be my third, but they are definitely getting bigger every time. Um, it actually would have been even bigger than this had the libraries not closed on the 23rd of March due to COVID-19, as I have so many books on reserve. But say la vie, I've got 21 books out from the library. I'd only have been able to take out nine more anyway. So because this is so long, I'm just gonna dive straight in. I'm just going with the one that I can grab first. I'm not going in any particular order. So, <laughs> well, the one that I grabbed first is Escape Routes by Naomi Ishiguro. Uh, this is a collection of short stories. A space obsessed child conjures a vortex in his mother's linen cupboard. A musician's fascination with the birds who flock to her balcony offers a startling new perspective on the city. This is a short story collection of speculative style fiction, which is not generally my genre, but it's short stories. So I think that that, makes it easier to get into a genre that you don't necessarily always read um, and they're about freedom, flight and new beginnings and find their worlds transformed beyond their wildest imagination. Um, I'm hoping it's like light speculative and not super speculative so that I can like ease my way into it a little bit. Right. Next I have Kim Ji Yong, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju, uh, which is a book that has recently been translated into English from Korean. It is set in South Korea, where it caused a lot of controversy in South Korea when it came out, apparently. It is about a woman who is leading a life the way that she thinks she's been told it she should, but she's still dealing with all of the sexism and not getting things and being told this is because of her and not because of the society. Uh, I've not read any South Korean literature before, so this works as part of my reading works in translation and my read around the world challenge for this year. Next, I have When the Body Says No by Gabo Mate. This is the only one of the books that I have from the library that is not a new release. Um, this is about the mind-body link and stress and the effect that stress can have on your body. The Hidden Cost of Stress is the subtitle. So it's about arthritis, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, IBS and multiple sclerosis. I have arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and I have other syndromes related to that. So I'm interested to see what role stress plays in that aspect of my life. Next one I have is Big Girl Small Town by Michelle Gallen. Uh, this is a work of Northern Irish fiction which is something that I am personally very keen to read because all of my mom's side of the family are from Northern Ireland. My mom's from Derry. This is about Magella who is um, who lives in a small town in Northern Ireland and has autism and it's also it says on the front here that it's um part way between it's the milkman meets dairy girls now i've not actually read the milkman i know i should but a lot of people um were talking about how confusing it was but i do love dairy girls um i have a feeling after i finish reading this i'll end up talking in a dairy accent and next i have the illness lesson by claire beams i think i've spoken about this one before i've spoken about this one before i'm not sure in what video but it is about a woman whose father runs a school for girls and suddenly all of the girls start getting sick and they bring in this mysterious doctor and then she starts getting sick as well um and it's set I think it's historical fiction uh, set in 1871 and she must confront the all-male, all-knowing voices in her society who insist that uh, the girls are can't be trusted. Next is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare. Now I've heard people say Abby Dare but it's got an acute accent so Abby Dare? I should probably have looked that up. Um, and I'm filming on my phone so I can't. Um, so this has been all over booktube and bookstagram I've seen it everywhere it's about a 14 year old Nigerian girl who knows what she wants an education so she's removed from school and sold as a third wife to an old man when unspeakable tragedy swiftly strikes in her new house she is secretly sold as a domestic servant to a household in the wavy enclaves of Lagos where no one will talk about the strange disappearance of her predecessor Rebecca no one but Aduni um this sounds like a really intriguing interesting novel and I have really enjoyed um, a lot of the books that I've read by Nigerian authors, uh, so this will be another one to add to the list. Then I have The Quarry by um, Ben Halls, and this is another collection of short stories set on a housing estate in the UK. I'm not sure if it's set in London or in the north, um, but it's about um, an in interconnecting story. They all live on this street called The Quarry, and um, it's about working class life in Brexit, post Brexit Britain. Um, and I personally want to read a lot more fiction from working class perspectives coming from a working class background myself um, and that being something that is an, another intersection that is often left out of the publishing world in the UK. By working class background I mean I am the child of working class parents. Then I also have Amnesty by Aravind Adiga and I think I've spoken about this one before in a 
anticipated new releases book um adiga won the man booker prize for white tiger but i've not read that this is a book about a sri lankan man who emigrates to australia and becomes an undocumented immigrant in australia and working as a cleaner um and one of his clients ends up dead and he thinks he knows who did it but it's about the struggle of st- as to whether to go to the police because he is undocumented um and we all know about the horrible treatment of undocumented immigrants including in australia so he doesn't know what is the morally right thing to do or if he will be safe next i have a big one and that is the other bennett's sister by janice hadlow this is one i'm really excited for because a lot of people have been talking about it um and because it is a retelling of pride and prejudice and i love pride and prejudice and this is pride and prejudice told from mary bennett's perspective uh, who is the quiet mousy unattractive, uh, pious, annoying sister in Pride and Prejudice and it's kind of flipping all of that on its head and find out what it's like to be the introvert in a family of extroverts. Next I have The Night Watchman by Louise the Night Watchman by Louise Eldrick. Um, Louise Eldrick is one of the most renowned Native American writers. Set in 1953 in rural North Dakota, Thomas Wojciechowski is the night watchman at the first factory to open near the Turtle Mountain Reser- Reservation. He is also a prominent Chippewa council member and deeply troubled by the US government's proposed new emancipation bill. I have, again, never read any Indigenous American fiction, so Louise Eldrick's books seemed like a good place to start. Only five more. Um, <laughs> I have The Slaughterman's Daughter by Yanev Ikskovitz. Uh, this is a book about, uh, this is another sort of folkloric historical fiction and it is about the townsfolk of mortal an isolated godforsaken town in the pale of settlement are shocked when fanny keesman a devoted wife mother of five and celebrated cheesemaker leaves her home at two hours past midnight um and this is the avenging of mende spaceman by the hand of her sister fanny and this was translated from the hebrew by what's in it or shaf shaf so this is another work in translated fiction and reading around the world because it's a book from israel so i think it's going to be sort of mysterious and creepy and i'm very excited for that and the next one is the temple house vanishing by rachel donahue another work of irish fiction although i think rachel donahue is from the republic and this is about a school um in which two girls and this teacher are all in this weird like obsessive triangle and then the girl one of the girls and the teacher go missing. And years later, a journalist comes trying to solve this mystery. And it's all about going back in time and trying to uncover long buried secrets. Then I have Hitting a Straight Look with the Crooked Stick by Zora Neale Hurston, another collection of short stories by one of the most famous writers of the Harlem Renaissance. She has passed away. This is not new stories, but it's a new collection of stories. Some are have never been published before, though. In the 1920s and 30s i think biting satire that shares revelations about love and migration gender and class racism and sexism that proudly reflect reflect african-american folk folk culture now as i'm also intending to read an f scott fitzgerald this month i think these two would those two would pair well together being from a similar era but entirely different worlds next is summer light and then comes the night by john kalman stephenson and this is a book set in iceland um and it is about what happens when you live in a place where there's 24 hours of daylight in summer and 24 hours of dark in winter it's about this small village that is a microcosm for the age-old conflict between human desire and destiny between the limits of reality and wings of the imagination and finally i have how we disappeared this one actually i said that um the when the body says no was the only one that wasn't a new release how we disappeared is also not a new release but it is the book on the women's prize long list in which i was most interested apart from the mirror and the light um and it is set in singapore jing jing lee the writer is singaporean so this is another read around the world challenge because i've never read a book from set in singapore before and it's about um during the second world war when the japanese troops invaded malaysia and then singapore and what the japanese empire did during the war in southeast asia so that sounds absolutely fascinating i love historical fiction and i especially love reading historical fiction about an era that i don't know about for example in february i read the shadow king by marzo mengis day about the ethiopia but the italian invasion of ethiopia at the same time that is all of my stranded library books um i've been seeing that hashtag on bookstagram uh, recently about all the library books that are currently stuck in your house with you because um, all of the libraries are closed. Uh, all of my like due dates have been extended to like May and June so um, I, I'm not the, in any hurry to get through all of these uh, especially because all of the ones that I have reserved 
that were supposed to be coming out soon, I'm not going to be able to get my hands on because the libraries are not functioning. Um, so that's going to be interesting. There may be no April library hall. Um, I'll just have to talk about all the books I get on BorrowBox instead. Let me know what books you got from the library before they all closed down, um, if there were any. And if you have read any of these, let me know what you thought of them. Thank you for watching and I will see you the day after tomorrow. Bye bye.